Welcome to the birthplace of one of the longest standing empires in the entire world. Right now we are here in Rome, Italy. Rome is a civilization that started up around 1000 BC and it actually started right here where we are now in Palatine Hill. But one thing you need to know about the Romans is they're revered today as one of the most technologically advanced ancient empires. They were some of the first to introduce literacy. They were one of the first empires in the world that had rules of law. They were in three continents, Northern Africa, they were in Asia. Europe and Europe. Asia, and then eventually their empire fell. Round of applause for their innovativeness. But it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies. They're also known for slavery, gladiator wars, and a lot of bloodshed. Are you not entertained? I love Russell Crowe. Today's video is going to show you guys some of the best places to explore around Rome and give you a tiny little bit of history. I'm joined here by uh, Catherine Esquivel, Roman Sparta? historian. Yeah. She studied this in school for about 12 years. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true? <laughs> no. Now, one of the best ways to see that history is none other to come to the Forum here in the Palatine Hills. And right back there, we'll go there next, the Colosseum, where Cathy will be fighting her next opponent. A tiger. Yeah. <laughs> right now, we're in the Roman Forum, and you did a little bit of research on it. It, it was the main place to handle all the economic, social, religious, and political business Fence, of the world. Yeah. So, so there death are trials people. were held here for criminals. Yeah. You doing your time? What are you in for? Are they gonna feed you to the lions? Hope not. Why are you scared here? You can still see all these ancient structures standing. Rome is one of those places that you cannot explore without appreciating the history, so I wanna give you the shortest form history possible. Basically, after excavating around this hill, they found some signs that people were here in 1000 BC, the signs of the early Roman Empire. And the Roman Empire basically continued on until 453 AD after death. That gives it nearly a time frame of 1500 years, one of the longest standing empires. One thing that's definitely for sure, would have been pretty risky to be a Roman because uh, you're either a poor peasant struggling to get by or you're uh, in power and everyone wants to stab you in the back and take your power. So I think I prefer being a millennial. What's up guys, it's your boy C Swizzle and today we're here with Roman Cribs. Right behind me here, this is the Imperial Palace from 64 AD after death, man. Ah, and as you can see, it's a pretty tight crib. No multi-car garage, but we got some big ass walls and it's a good time in here. The Palatine Hills were actually where a lot of the richest, richest people lived and so you've got palaces, you've got homes of the elite and uh, this is one of the long-standing ones. It was the palace of a Roman dude. There are a lot of people here. Oh my gosh. How much are we regretting sleeping in this morning? One thing you need to know about Rome is that there's a lot of cruise ships that come here so you can actually avoid a lot of the morning rush simply by going early morning because most of the cruise ships don't offload people until about 9 or 10 in the morning. You want to be my vlog? What's up? Welcome to the vlog. Hi, I'm Josh. Any, uh, anything up? you want to shout out to? Um, shout out, um, Stan. Hi mom, hi dad. That's key, yeah. Oh, the gladiators. It's all so romantic. I don't even need to explain what is right behind me here. This is where we're going into next. And one thing you need to know about ticketing is it's about 12 euros to get in here and the Palantine Hill. The whole thing is sold together. So here is a Rome tip. Basically, the line here gets crazy long. It's actually a lot faster to buy your ticket at Palantine Hill. Go there first and then you're assigned a time to come into the Colosseum. Ours is in like 10 minutes, so we're gonna head to the entrance now. You have ticket, you need yeah. buy ticket. ticket yeah. Everyone's so concerned about your tickets. They're yeah. so friendly. So friendly. You trying to sell me a ticket too? So one thing that's really interesting is it says here it was completely free to come and attend these events to watch people kill each other and it was all seated by your social class. So as you can imagine, the most important people were up front and the poorest and the least relevant people all the way at the back. And there's actually a diagram here kind of showing what it would have looked like. But you can see people just drinking, eating food. You can even see people fighting in the crowd. Would have been pandemonium. This right here is one of the craziest places I've ever been. Right there is the bloody arena floor that has taken the lives of half a million people. And Kathy told me in the first three days, 5,000 predatorial animals. No, like in the first lions, 100 days. 100 days. In the, in the grand it's opening, 5,000 animals yeah. died. So bears, lions, wolves, ducks, um, all sorts of crazy animals were 
basically put up against people with swords or no weapons at all. One of the interesting things about the gladiator history and culture is that most gladiators were actually kind of put into it as prisoners, as slaves, or prisoners of war. And so this was a small chance for them to win back their freedom, to actually leave the gladiator stadium with prestige, with a bit of money, and in a higher class in society. So it's that little tiny light of the tunnel that kept so many of them fighting for their lives. And actually towards the end of the empire, towards the end of the Roman Republic, some people were actually volunteering themselves to become slaves in society so that they could enroll to become gladiators. They would put themselves in a disadvantaged position in life for that slight trade-off that maybe one day they would be able to have all the privileges of a very elite Roman gentleman. It's horrible. It's, it's really horrible, but I can't help but feel like this is the most fascinating part to me. I don't know what it is, but I'm just naturally so interested by everything that happened here. One of the things that they found are some pain paintings that prove that they were women gladiators. That's incredible. We don't know if they were they did it because they wanted to do it or they were forced, but there were some like very strong women trying to fight for their lives. Well, I've earned my freedom. Back to Rome I go. Just us, the crowds, the Colosseum, and some mediocre pizza from a tourist shop. Mm, it's really good. It's not even average. You're such a hey there, it wasn't. For our scooter rental, we stopped at a place called Bici Bachi. In English, it means bike and kiss. We've gotten ourselves this beautiful, traditional Italian Vespa, and this is gonna be our way of getting around for the next few days. Andiamo. What does that mean? Let's go. This is so awesome. And the weather is perfect. The good thing about driving a scooter is that you can literally park it anywhere. Basically, just find a spot between two cars, you're good. Actually, sorry, you're good. Gladiator time! Let's get some bloodshed. It is another day of traveling through Rome here, and yesterday night we had the most amazing walking tour through Trastevere, which is like a must-see side of Rome. It's a beautiful neighborhood, lots of authentic Italian food, from gelato to hidden gems, wine cellars underneath a burnt-down synagogue, all sorts of crazy stuff. If you want to learn more about that, then check out my food guide video, which is dedicated to everything that is delicious in the city. But uh, today, we're gonna get back on the road. This is a block of oxtail. This is phenomenal. Here we are, after an amazing foodie stop, we have arrived at what is deemed to be one of the most well-preserved and influential buildings of ancient Rome. This right here is the Pantheon, and this was built in 120 AD. How impressive it is that something that was built that long ago stands like this today. Originally built as a way to tribute to the pagan gods of Rome, so basically back in the day when they believed in many gods, this was their temple. Uh, it's now a church? Yeah, it's now a church. Most churches in all of Rome are free to enter. Another great thing is we're coming a bit later, it's 3 p.m. No line, a lot of people here, but uh, we're not caught waiting outside to get in. Guys, it's even more impressive from the inside. So if you can see up there, that is a beam of light coming through and there's actually no closure. So when it rains, it rains right into the Pantheon. And you can actually see there's a little drain right there. So the water would just drip down from there and end up draining below. All right, 20 minutes later, that was the furthest drive we've done yet. We've now arrived in the Spanish Steps. Yeah, set of stairs. Moderately interesting at best, but there's a bit of history here. Apparently they're the widest stairs in the world. Wow. They don't look that wide to me, so I find that surprising. And secondly, they connected the Spanish Embassy with the rest of Rome, so that was why they got called the Spanish Steps. Excuse me, sir. Nothing. There's this one girl I love, and I want to show her I love her, but I don't know how. Do you have any advice? No, this way another person this. Look, no? I don't know this. That was his one chance to sell a flower and he... Yeah. <laughs> he missed it. <laughs> he's trying to force flowers into everyone's hand, but the one chance he's given, it kind of went over his head a little. We actually decided to take a bit of a chill out moment to get away from all of the craziness of Rome. Getting close to high season and you feel it everywhere. But there's a few local parks that you can actually just like, get on ice cream, walk around, see the cute local dogs. And this is Villa Borges and it's right behind the Spanish steps. So it's a nice green breakaway from it all. It's With the third uh, biggest public park in Rome. And it's really beautiful. We're either brave or very stupid because we're about to do Trevi Fountain at 5 p.m. Oh. oh no. Oh my gosh. Wild. 
So one thing I will say, I will give it credit as being much, much more beautiful than it looked like in the photos. The downside is that it's much busier than I expected. I didn't think the crowds would be anywhere near this. It must get even busier here in midday, and this is insane. Rome is one of those spots you gotta do the touristy stuff. It's also not always the most enjoyable stuff. Like for me, the Spanish steps, the Pantheon, you know, it's great for history, but it's very tiring and it's not enjoyable travel for me. A couple spots are good, but I'm definitely not gonna try to tack off every single spot in Rome. You would simply spend all day seeing a bit of this. For me, the enjoyable side of Rome has been just eating our way through it, experiencing more of the local side. Uh, you know, that's more my style of travel. However, you guys like to travel, is totally cool. But yeah, soft recommendation for things like Trevi Fountain. Good luck to them. <laughs> oh my god. There's an entire bridal party here to take their photos. I really hope people respect you. How are they gonna manage that? Wow, they got the photo. They got That's it. how you do it. You gotta show up with bridal dresses next time. <laughs> That's a travel tip. Just show up like you're getting married and you will have the fountain to yourself. People respect that. You're the closest we have to an Italian expert. Do you wanna say where we are? <laughs> Piazza Navona. This is Piazza Navona. And it's Piazza just means plaza, I think. Yeah. Square. Yeah, it's square. And this is a beautiful one. It looks like I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> Someone in the square just took a photo of Katy. And they printed it. You do look like you're about to sneeze. So, we meet again, Trevi Fountain. What time now? 7.20, more or less. Where are my early morning Instagram freaks at? We're here for the gram. <laughs> No question about it, you've got to do sunrise. 20 minutes later, we've arrived by scooter to a brand new country. In fact, it's the world's smallest country with a two mile border circling it. This right here is the Vatican City and it's kind of a confusing case because although it's completely separate, it is an autonomous country, it actually does some things with Italy. For example, it doesn't do its own taxation, but they can print their own euro, they can create their own license plates, their own passports, and with a population of a thousand people, they're not printing that many passports. This is the Basilica, and this is one of the largest churches, one of the most incredible churches in the entire world. Dress code you need to know about is you're allowed to wear shorts, but they must cast a shadow over your knee, is the term. So what Cassie's wearing is fine. The shoulders are covered. This is where the Pope gives his addresses when he basically talks to the masses of people. And that actually happens today, because today is Wednesday. No, Every today Wednesday. is Thursday. Never mind, it was yesterday. <laughs> Freaking massive. Oh my gosh. This is absolutely insane, guys. Mind blowing detailing in every single inch of this building. Like, how did they ever build such a beautiful building back in the day? You have to be quiet though, because people are actually in church. So, we've just seen the basilica, and that's completely free. But now we're actually going to be going up to the dome and it's 8 euros to go by foot or 10 euros to take the elevator. So guys, you can actually get a upper view here over top of the basilica. I can hear the choir and the way this building is designed. The sound carries throughout and the sound is just like angelic from up here. It's so, so beautiful. Kind of like a faint sound of the hymns in the corners. The secret side of the church they don't want you to know about. If you're claustrophobic, I don't know. This might not be for you. It's pretty tight in here. Oh my gosh. This reminds me of a carnival. Like one of those illusion rooms that you walk into and you can't walk a straight line. It doesn't end. And now there's a rope. The survivors, we made it. We're on top of the world. So apparently all this out here, guys, is the Pope's Garden. Rome is a really, really short city. None of the buildings are overly tall. And so I think to have come up here and get this view over the city, it's worth it. Do you agree? Do you concur? 100%. I also like the staircase. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> this is so claustrophobic. So that right there, guys, is the Swiss Guard. And the man is not moving an inch. There's so many more things you could be doing here in Vatican City, including the Sistine Chapel, one of the highlights. But for us, we're, we're done. We're done our sightseeing for today. 
Uh, we're gonna head out, go get some food, potentially some spaghetti. I haven't had any yet. I learned some pretty sad news the other day when I was filming my food guide. Apparently Italians don't have meatballs with their spaghetti. My whole life's been a lie. That was a really nice meal and 25 euros for the two of us. Pretty hard to beat that. Somebody got burned today. <laughs> During our time in Rome, we've been staying at this incredible hotel by the name of Chapter Roma. And this is the room here. It's a beautiful studio loft kind of modern with a chic touch to it. Right now we're actually in the Jewish ghetto, which sounds like a bit of a rough area, but it's actually one of the best places you can stay in Rome. Our carpet has a butt on it. The price for one of their basic rooms starts around here, but of course it depends what season you're coming in. We give this hotel a mamma mia and a half. Mamma mia, bellissimo. That is where I'm gonna end today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please leave the video a big thumbs up. It really makes a big difference. And if you're planning yourself a trip to Rome, do not miss out on the food guide that I posted last week. See you next Saturday, and let's get lost again in the next one.